Saanich, British Columbia is a relatively decent sized community on Vancouver Island, part of the Capital Regional District, which is comprised of 13 municipalities. However, Saanich is the most populous with a consensus of approximately 117,735 people and is also the largest with a land mass of 103.78 kilometers squared. And within that land mass lies a majestical place full of wonder and awe with a diverse landscape with varying flora and fauna, this is my backyard. The fig tree. Although not native to my backyard, it was introduced in the 90s as a way to make my backyard look more Mediterranean. The fig tree has been cultivated for thousands of years, prized for its sweet, nutritious fruits. Native to the Mediterranean and Western Asia, the fig tree is hardy, deciduous plant that can grow in a variety of climates, though it thrives in warm, temperate regions. It typically reaches a height of 10 to 30 feet with broad, lobed leaves and a smooth, light-colored bark. These trees can live for several decades, sometimes even over a hundred years, becoming more productive as they mature. The fruit of the fig tree is unique in that it is not technically a fruit, but a cyconium, an inverted flower structure that houses the tree's tiny flowers inside. Much like the apple tree is known in helping the discovery of gravity, the fig tree is also known for a discovery itself. Isaac Newton, a 17th century English physicist and mathematician, is famously said to have discovered the concept of gravity while sitting under an apple tree watching an apple fall. Though the story of the apple tree may be more legend than fact, it symbolizes Newton's groundbreaking work that transformed our understanding of the natural world. Isaac wasn't alone in his discoveries, though. He also had a jealous brother who would discover something on his own. Fueled by a love of pastries and a hatred for science, Wayne went on to discover the Fig Newton, a horribly dry biscuit that seems to only be delightful to old people. An animal that could benefit from these delectable fruits but doesn't is the eastern gray squirrel. Eastern gray squirrels are primarily herbivores with a diet that consists of nuts, seeds, fruits, and tree bark. In Saanich, they often feed on acorns, pine cones, and the seeds of native trees like Gary Oaks. They are opportunistic feeders and may also consume bird eggs, fungi, and garden vegetables. During the fall, they cache food in various locations to retrieve it during the winter months. During the colder winter months, they remain relatively inactive, reducing their activity to conserve energy. While they don't hibernate, they spend more time sheltered in their nests, relying on the food they stored in the fall to survive until spring. The eastern gray squirrel is a non-native species in Saanich, introduced to Vancouver Island in the 1960s. These squirrels have adapted well to the region's urban and suburban environments, often found in parks, gardens, and wooded areas. Research in BC found that gray squirrels would be unlikely to displace other squirrels on Vancouver Island, and there is little evidence of this happening. Gray squirrels co-occur with red squirrels over large parts of North America. These squirrels have different food and shelter preferences. Urban development and loss of coniferous forests is more likely responsible for native squirrel population declines. This is flatweed, also known as cat's ear meow. It is an invasive plant species in Saanich, British Columbia. Native to Europe, somewhere, it closely resembles dandelions, but can be identified by its hairy leaves and multiple flowering stems. Flatweed thrives in disturbed soils, spreading rapidly across lawns, parks, and roadsides. It outcompetes native vegetation due to its resilience and adaptability, forming dense patches that hinder the growth of local plant species. The invasion of flatweed in Saanich poses a significant ecological threat. By monopolizing space and resources, it reduces biodiversity, making it harder for native plants to flourish. This in turn affects local wildlife, particularly insects and pollinators, which rely on indigenous flora for food and habitat. The spread of flatweed alters the balance of ecosystems, potentially leading to long-term changes in plant community structure and a reduction in the health of local habitats.
The European wall lizard is an introduced species in Saanich, believed to have been accidentally released in the 1970s from a zoo on Vancouver Island. Native to, you guessed it, southern Europe, these small agile lizards have adapted to the mild climate of the region and are commonly seen in sunny areas such as rock walls, gardens, and parks. In Saanich, European wall lizards thrive in urban and suburban areas, particularly in places with rocky outcrops, retaining walls, and warm sheltered spots. They are diurnal, often seen basking in the sun to regulate their body temperature. They are excellent climbers and use both natural and man-made structures for shelter and hunting. European wall lizards primarily feed on insects including ants, beetles, spiders, and other small invertebrae. Their presence in Saanich has raised concerns about their potential impact on native insect populations, though more research is needed to understand the full extent of their ecological effect. During the warmer months, European wall lizards are highly active, foraging and basking throughout the day. As temperatures drop in the fall, they become less active and enter a state of brumation, similar to hibernation. During the winter, seeking shelter in crevices or underground. Their rapid spread and ability to adapt to various environments have made them a notable feature of Saanich's urban ecosystems. You may be wondering at the end of all this, what didn't the Europeans bring over? Well, an appreciation for diverse and delicate ecosystems, respect for other cultures and traditions, and in general, common decency. I didn't realize there were so many introduced and invasive species in Saanich, let alone in my own backyard. Although more studies have to be done on the effects of these introduced species, I think it's an important lesson to think about the outcome of what your selfish actions will do to affect not only the ecology, but how the ecological change can affect the local indigenous people of that land. The biggest lesson I think we can take away from all this is stop being European. <laughs> and at the risk of sounding xenophobic, the actual lesson is to stop thinking it's okay to introduce species to foreign lands because it reminds you of home, or because you think it's cool to own an exotic animal. And sorry for getting all preachy, I just feel we need to be more aware of what our actions will do. Thank you so much for watching, and tune in next time for, <laughs> who knows, maybe lizard people will take over.